current affairs for beginners let's start our today's session these are all the topics that we are going to cover in our today's video our first article is supreme court increases vv pat verification this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity here the supreme court has increased the verification of vv pat to five random electronic voting machines in each assembly constituency from the prelims point of view from this article we should know what is meant by this vv pat voter verified paper audit trial system this is a machine that is attached to the electronic voting machine it will allow the voter to verify if they have voted to the person whom they want to vote how it will work when the voter casts his or her vote on the evm that means when he or she presses the button on the evm then the machine that is attached to this vv pad will generate a paper slip and that paper slip will have the name of the candidate to whom the voter has voted and also the party symbol of that candidate see this could be a possible question this paper slip will contain name of the candidate and the party symbol and this will be recorded in the machine's control unit so a printer is attached to the balloting unit and that will be kept in the voting compartment and this control unit will be with the polling officer and this slip will remain visible for 7 seconds through a transparent window and this paper can be used later to tally it with the button that is pressed in the electronic voting machine so from where this use of vv pat has attained the legality under the rule 49a of the code of election rules of 1961 it provides that every electronic voting machine can have a control unit and a balloting unit and it also states that a printer with a drop box can also be attached to the voting machine for printing a paper trial of the vote when is this system first used these machines were first used in a by election in nagaland in 2013 then what is the method of counting these vv pat slips the poll panel is currently adopting a system of counting the vv pat slips in one randomly selected polling booth in every assembly constituency in case of legislative assembly elections and one polling booth in each assembly segment for the parliament elections but now the supreme court has increased this number to five randomly selected evms in each assembly constituency the next article is army gets dhanush artillery guns this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of defense the first batch of six indigenously developed dhanush artillery guns were handed over to the army and the, from the prelims point of view we should know about this dhanush artillery guns and here there is mention of north atlantic treaty organization nato and also global positioning system we'll look into these three first let us look about this dhanush artillery guns this dhanush is the first indigenously that is within the country it was built 155 mm by 45 caliber long range artillery gun with a strike range of 38 km and these are the improved versions of bofors guns that were acquired by india between 1987 and 91 this dhanush is a versatile weapon that can operate in all climatic conditions and this gun is equipped with navigation based sighting system and it also has an auto laying facility and on board ballistic computation and advanced day night direct firing system here this dhanush is a joint effort by ordnance factory board and the army and the defense research and development organization the drdo and directorate general quality assurance and the psus like bharat electronics limited sale and other private firms next let us look about this north atlantic treaty organization nato is an intergovernmental military alliance between the nations from north america and europe it consists of 
independent member countries across North America and Europe. This organization is based on a system of collective defense. What is this collective defense? If any member is attacked by an external party, then all the members agree to provide mutual defense as a response to the attack by an external party. This is known as a system of collective defense. The headquarters of this NATO is in Brussels of Belgium. The next thing is global positioning system. What is this GPS? It is a space based global navigation satellite system that will provide location and time information in all weather and at all times. This GPS is a US owned utility which will provide the users with the positioning, navigation and timing services. The next thing is GLONASS. This GLONASS global navigation satellite system. This is Russia based global positioning system. Galileo belongs to European Union and Bidu. This belongs to China and our Indian version is NAVIC, Navigation with Indian Constellation or it is also known as Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System. The next article is IIT Madras Top Centers Higher Education Rankings. This article comes under GS Paper 2 under the topic of issues related to education. Here the National Institution Ranking Framework List for 2019 was released. From the prelims point of view, we should know what is this NIRF, National Institution Ranking Framework. This is a methodology to rank institutions across the country and it covers six categories of institutions including universities, engineering, management, pharmacy, architecture and colleges. And based on these parameters like teaching, learning and resources, research and professional practices, graduation outcomes, outreach and inclusivity and perception. Based on these factors, the institutions will be ranked. This framework was approved by the Ministry of Human Resources and Development and it is launched in 2015. In 2019 ranking, the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Madras, was ranked in number one position. The next article is Open up the Supreme Court. This article comes under GS Paper 2 under the topic of Judiciary. Recently, the Supreme Court has heard the case on a petition that was filed regarding the application of right to information to the Office of Chief Justice of India and the assets of Chief Justice of India and regarding the mechanism of collegium. From this article, from the prelims point of view, let us look into three things. One is RTI, Collegium and NJAC. First, what is this RTI? Right to information. It means the freedom of people to have access to the government information. It means the citizens and the non-governmental organizations can enjoy a free access to all the files and documents related to the government operations, decisions and performance. And this right to information is an intrinsic part of two fundamental rights. One is the right to freedom of speech and expression under Article 19 and the other one is Article 21 that deals with right to life and personal liberty. Now let us look into the process of filing a petition seeking information under this right to information act. According to this Right to Information Act that was passed in 2005, it gives the right to all the citizens to acquire information from the public authorities. So a citizen can file an application in English or in any other language along with application fees. Whereas in case of a below poverty line families, this application fees is exempted. And the citizen can even ask the information orally here by providing the contact details and he need not provide any reason for asking the information. It is the duty of the head of the department in every department to constitute a public information officer to provide the information. Now, once the citizen seeks for the information, the application has to be processed by this public information officer. He can accept that application and provide the information to the citizen within 
30 days which is the maximum period or if the citizen without awareness if he had approached an irrelevant department then again it is the responsibility of this public information officer to forward this application to the relevant department within five days and he should convey this information to the citizen but here there are some exemptions also here under this act under section 8 there are some areas in which the information cannot be disclosed to the citizens so these areas were exempted under this rti act so the public information officer can inform this to the citizen that the details cannot be provided now here the citizen has filed an application to a relevant department and the PIO has accepted it and provided the information to the citizen. But the citizen is not satisfied with the information that is provided by the public information officer. Then what he has to do? Then he can approach the first appellate authority. That appellate authority is a one level higher officer to this public information officer. In another case, if the public information officer, he intentionally rejects the application, then the citizen can get his grievance redressed by applying to the second appellate authority, who is the Central or State Information Commissions, by filing a complaint to them. Even now, if he is not satisfied with the information that is provided by the CIC or SIC, then he can approach the court because now right to information is a legal right. And here we have said that the maximum time period to provide the information is 30 days in case of if the citizen has filed the info, asked the information to an irrelevant department, then extra five days will be given for the PIO to forward this application to the relevant department. So within 35 days, the information has to be provided to the citizen. If it has got delayed, then the PIO has to pay a penalty of 250 rupees per each delay. The next thing is collegium. What is this collegium system? The collegium system in India is the system by which the judges are appointed by the judges only. It is also referred to as judges selecting judges. It is a system of appointment and transfer of judges that has evolved through the judgments of the Supreme Court and not by an act of parliament or by a provision in the constitution. The Supreme Court Collegium will be headed by the Chief Justice of India and it comprises of four other senior most judges of the Supreme Court whereas a High Court Collegium is led by the Chief Justice and the four other senior most judges of that court. The names recommended for the appointment by a High Court Collegium will reach the government only after the approval of CJI and the Supreme Court Collegium. Here the government is bound to appoint a person as a Supreme Court judge if the collegium reiterates its recommendation. Now if we look into the evolution of this collegium system, I have said that the system was evolved through the judgments of Supreme Court and not by an act of parliament or by a provision in the constitution. According to the first judge's case, the Chief Justice of India will not have primacy over the executive in the appointment of judges of Supreme Court and High Court. Whereas in the second judge's case, the decision made the judiciary as a de facto appointing authority of themselves and it has curtailed the power of council of ministers under article 74 clause 1 in appointing the judges of high courts and supreme court. Whereas in the third judge's case, a nine judge bench has again confirmed that the opinion of the collegium of judges will have primacy in appointing and the transfer of judges of higher judiciary. Based on this decision, a detailed memorandum of procedure was prepared based on which the present collegium system was formed. The next thing is National Judicial 
Appointments Commission. What is this NJAC? This is a constitutional body that was proposed to replace the present collegium system of appointing the judges. The 99th constitutional amendment was introduced to propose this National Judicial Appointment Commission to replace the collegium system for appointing the judges. And the parliament has also passed this NJAC Act of 2014 to regulate the functions of this commission. But in 2015, the Supreme Court has upheld the collegium system and it has struck down the NJAC as unconstitutional and void because this NJAC will be responsible for making binding recommendations to the president for appointing the judges to the Supreme Court and the High Courts. And this proposed NJAC consists of Chief Justice of India as its ex officio chairperson and two senior most judges of Supreme Court, a law minister and two eminent persons nominated jointly by the Prime Minister, Chief Justice of India and the leader of opposition. And these people were not eligible for re-nomination. The next article is playing politics over Golan hates. This article comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of international relations. Here, recently the United States has recognized Israel's sovereignty over Golan hates. The topics from the prelims point of view that are important from this article is we should know the location of Golan Heights and West Bank. We should know what is this joint comprehensive plan of action and UNSC resolutions 242 and 338 and what is this Camp Davis Accords. First, let us look into the location of this Golan Heights and West Bank. Here you can see the location of this West Bank and Golan Heights. This Golan Heights was part of Syria until 1967, but Israel has captured this in a six-day war. Syria has tried to regain this Golan Heights, but it has failed. All its attempts has failed. And recently, US has declared that this Golan Heights is a sovereign territory of Israel. To understand in detail, we should know about this UNSC 242 and 338 resolutions. In 1967, in a six-day war, Israel has attacked Egypt and gained control over the territory that was controlled by Egypt, Syria and Jordan. Here, the Israel has gained the control over Sinai Peninsula and Gaza Strip from Egypt, Golan Heights from Syria and the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan. What happened here is, as a response to this six-day war, the United Nations Security Council has passed a resolution known as UNSC 242 resolution. The formula of this resolution is land for peace. And this resolution is a base for all the later peace negotiations between Israel, Palestinians and the surrounding Arab states. This resolution has called for the withdrawal of Israeli armed forces from the territories that were occupied, that is Sinai Peninsula, Gaza Strip, West Bank, Golan Heights. It has asked the Israeli armed forces to the withdraw from these territories. And it had called for respect and acknowledgement of sovereignty, territorial integrity and political independence of every state in that area and it should also acknowledge the right to live in peace within secure and recognized boundaries that are free from threats or acts of force. This is all about this UNSC 242 resolution. Whereas in 1972, the Palestinian gunmen has killed 11 Israeli athletes at Munich Olympics. And in 1973, both Egypt and Syria, they together has organized a surprise attack on Israeli forces in Sinai Peninsula and Golan Heights. Followed by these series attacks, the UNSC has passed another resolution that is UNSC 338 resolution. According to this resolution, it has called for an immediate ceasefire. It has asked to stop the fire and it said the UNSC 
टू फोर्टी टू रिजोल्यूशन हैज टू बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड इमीडिएटली इन ऑर्डर टू एस्टाब्लिश पीस इन द मिडिल ईस्टर्न कंट्रीज द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज कैम डेविड अकॉर्ड्स हियर द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इजिप्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इसराइल एंड प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स हैज साइंड दिस कैम्प डेविड अकॉर्ड्स इन नाइनटीन एटी एज पर दिस अकॉर्ड Israel has agreed to hand back the Sinai Peninsula that it has occupied in the 6 day war in 1967 to Egypt in return for peace and normalization This is very significant accord because this is the first time an Arab country has signed a peace treaty with Israel and accepted the existence of Israel As a result Egypt was expelled from the Arab League in reaction to this peace agreement with Israel the next thing is joint comprehensive plan of action this joint comprehensive plan of action is commonly known as iran deal this deal was signed between iran p5 countries who are these p5 countries these are the five permanent members of united nations security council they are china us france russia and uk and also germany and european union in 2015 the aim of this deal is to curb iran's nuclear program according to this deal most of the iran's enriched uranium has to be shipped out of the country and a heavy water facility has to be made inoperable operational nuclear facilities should be brought under the international inspection in return if iran signs this deal the sanctions on iran will be lifted the next article is oil at 5 month high on libya output threat here the oil prices has increased due to the reduced supply in libya and opec led cuts and us sanctions against iran and venezuela this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy and from the prelims point of view here we should know what is this opec opec stands for organization of petroleum exporting countries this is founded in 1960 in baghdad and it is headquartered in vienna of austria and currently this organization has total 14 member countries this organization works on the principle of unanimity and each member has one vote what does this organization do what is its purpose it will set the production targets how much of oil has to be produced by its member nations if this opec reduces these production targets then the oil prices will increase here you can look into the 14 countries of organization of petroleum exporting countries here there are 15 countries but recently in this year qatar has withdrawn its membership it has iraq libya algeria venezuela Ecuador, Nigeria, Gabon, Angola, Iran, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. All these 14 nations who are the members of this OPEC. The next article is World Bank pegs India's GDP growth at 7.5%. According to the World Bank, India's GDP growth is expected to accelerate to 7.5% in the financial year of 2019-20. This article comes under GS paper 3 economy and the topic that is important for us is here we should know about this institute known as World Bank. This World Bank is an international organization that helps the emerging market countries the developing countries to reduce poverty and share the prosperity. It is its goal to achieve this by 2030. This World Bank is like a cooperative and it is made up of 189 member countries and these member countries who are also known as shareholders will be represented by the board of governors who are the ultimate policy makers at the World Bank Now let's look into the structure here this World Bank group consists of five institutions and out of these five two are development institutions one is international bank for reconstruction and development this will provide loans credits and grants and the other thing is international development association which will provide 
लो और जीरो इंटरेस्ट लोन टू द लो इनकम कंट्रीज टूगेदर दिस आई बी आर डी एंड आई डी ए दे वर नोन एज वर्ल्ड बैंक वेर एज दिस फाइव इंस्टीट्यूशन टूगेदर विल बी नोन एज वर्ल्ड बैंक ग्रुप द अदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर इंटरनेशनल फिनेंस कॉपरेशन दिस विल प्रोवाइड इन्वेस्टमेंट एडवाइस एंड एसेट मैनेजमेंट टू द कंपनीज एज वेल एज गवर्नमेंट्स एंड दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज द लार्जेस्ट ग्लोबल डिवेलपमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट फोकस इज एक्सक्लूसिवली ऑन द प्राइवेट सेक्टर द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज मल्टीलेटरल गारंटी एजेंसी दिस एजेंसी विल इंश्योर द लेंडर्स एंड इन्वेस्टर्स अगेंस्ट अ पोलिटिकल रिस्क लाइक वॉर and the other thing is international center for settlement of disputes this will settle the investment disputes between the investors and the countries so by seeing all this we can say the purpose and the function of world bank is to provide low interest loans interest free credits and grants to the developing countries and it focuses mainly on improving education health and infrastructure Now let's look into a previous year question which of the following organizations brings out the publication known as world economic outlook the answer here is world bank it is world bank which publishes this world economic outlook and this is all for today see you all on tomorrow thank you